Welcome to Joe's RC Pit. Today we're going to do a little show and tell on my TBS Discovery Pro. Uh, this is the build that I did. Um, there's lots of different ways you can hook these up and lots of different locations you can mount your parts. But I wanted to show you what worked well for me and uh, what's given me great flights uh, without interference. And uh, one word of caution though I would like to mention um, is on the video transmitters. Uh, if you do decide to go with a 1.3 gigahertz video transmitter, you're probably going to run into some issues uh, because the harmonics actually affect uh, the NASA GPS here. So there are some issues with that. They're very close in frequency and close enough uh, to uh, affect the GPS uh, in negative ways. What I found worked the best was um, having the video transmitter lied, lied horizontally here. We had a metal foil shield cup uh, underneath the NASA with a shielded uh, tape on it so it uh, would block uh, reflect any RF away from the receive antenna. We also had to run the uh, the transmit antenna out like this and then kind of curved it around on a rigid coax so it was way out over here just out of the GoPro view and uh, with the shield and the antenna mounted far away we actually got it to work with an 800 milliwatt uh, 1.3 gig VTX. I wasn't too impressed with the video quality at 1.3 gig, the uh, the 2.4 and the 5.8 give you much better uh, video quality in that respect. And what I've also found out is that uh, I do like the TBS uh, tuned 2.4 and the Boss uh, 5.8, but I've noticed that there is a little bit uh, less of a video quality than you get with the Immersion RC 5.8. Now I'm not talking about distance quality, I'm talking about the actual picture quality. Uh, it actually just looks a little bit better on the Immersion RC. Um, a lot of people are going to say that's because of the way you're powering the VTX. And let me, let me explain to you a little bit about that. Uh, right now, we actually have the GoPro charging at one amp. We also are powering the TBS-69. That's about all the core can handle on, on the uh, Discovery Pro. If you try to power up the VTX as well, the core is going to overheat and it's going to start resetting on you. You're going to have all kinds of problems. So to get around that, we decided to run the power from the, for the uh, VTX for the TBS transmitters off of the 5-volt uh, rail that's actually on the NASA flight computer. Uh, this 5-volt rail is being powered by all four ESCs, so there's plenty of current there. There's also a power brick for the NASA, I think, that also contributes to that 5-volt rail. So there's plenty of power there to run a, uh, a VTX, as well as uh, probably some other things, too, if you want to do some LED lighting and stuff like that. So we checked that out, and uh, we wanted to make sure that that little bit of snowy signal we were getting from the, the TBS transmitters uh, was coming from possibly the the voltage source. So I went ahead and got a uh, uh, a uh, lipo battery, and we've tried it with uh, running this uh, off of lipo lipo battery, and also with a, a five volt linear regulator uh, with the lipo battery. And we we still had the same type of uh, video shortcomings uh, that we saw in this versus the the immersion. Now as far as distance, uh, the tune TBS, you're definitely going to get way more distance out of this than you will with the Immersion RC. Plus with the 2.4 you can go, you'll, you'll have more penetration through trees and around buildings. I've been able to fly around some buildings up close with this one. Um, so I haven't had too many issues with that. Uh, distance wise I can't really tell you because I've, I haven't really gone out and done any distance tests between this 5.8 and then the Boss uh, 5.8. Uh, but I can tell you that the 2.4 does have, uh, the tuned one has uh, way more range than, than this one here. Uh, this is also very line of sight. 5.8 gig, you got to be, you got to see your quad. If you go behind a tree, or if you go behind a building, or even a sign, a billboard, or something like that, you're probably going to lose your video with the 5.8. So uh, let's move on. We'll go around. Uh, let's power this up so you can see what it looks like here. And uh, I actually mounted the current sensor to the quad with a custom piece of plastic on the back here that I tie wrapped to the frame. So that makes it nice and rigid. And I also put another strap around the frame here to, to keep this really nice and rigid. So as you can see, when I plug my power in, it doesn't move. And I can yank this back out and I don't have to worry about this moving. And then, of course, we have our LiPo monitor underneath. I always run the LiPo monitor because you never know uh, if your battery is going to have a problem or not. Uh, you don't want to damage your LiPo. So it's always good to have your, your LiPo alarm on. Uh, you can have this on when you fly or, or not. It's up to you. Uh, okay, so we'll go around the quad here. Uh, we'll start over here in the corner. This is a Flytrex uh, core system. This is actually a flight recorder or a black box, if you will, records uh, all the information it gets from the NASA GPS because it actually goes through the GPS. also records temperature 
and it gives it a, a, a kind of a fake timestamp that you can use to sync up with software like Dashware to give you high definition gauges on your video. Like if you've seen some of my other flight videos uh, with the gauges, I use the data from this, uh, this Flytrex here. Uh, and then as we go around, we have our receiver here. This is the Immersion RC Easy UHF and a diversity receiver. That's why there's two antennas on here. And the way this connects up to the quad is it's really easy. You go one-to-one -one across. Each connector is one-to-one -one across. So it makes it very easy to install. So that might help out a lot of guys that are uh, wondering about that. That's pretty simple. And then over here we have the TBS Easy OSD. Um, I do recommend the TBS version of this. Uh, it has a different GPS and a different firmware. And uh, the lock times on this is way faster than the Immersion RC version. Uh, definitely love that. Um, we actually watched the video when this has a lock. We can pretty much guarantee that the NAS is already locked on. So that works out very well. Uh, we have uh, TBS bulletproof ESCs on, underneath each arm here and over here. And we're using uh, TBS motors and Groppner 9x5 props. I've tried some other props, but uh, I really like the Groppners and I've always come back to them. And if we go around the front here, we have our, our GoPro camera. And then we have on the front is our neutral density filter for helping with a jello effect on bright sunny days. This quad flies really good with the Groppner balanced props and everything. You really don't need that, but uh, it doesn't seem to hurt. And um, over here we have our, our TBS 69 flight camera. And then we have our controller for the flight camera here. I left this on the quad because it's kind of hard to plug it in. And then sometimes uh, if you have a sunny day and then a cloudy day and you want to adjust uh, some of the settings in the TBS 69, you can do it right here uh, looking through the on-screen on display. So, and then the front here we have our, our Cobb uh, LEDs. These are 10 watt LEDs. They're all regulated. The uh, regulators are actually underneath the arms here and here. So if you're looking for a good place to mount them. This is where I put them. And those are, those are custom um, uh, 30 watt uh, power supplies, but I have them tuned to uh, 10 watts. And then of course we have the uh, six watt uh, switching regulators for the rear Cobb red LEDs. Uh, we have this uh, power switch here to turn on the Cobb LEDs because we're using all eight channels on the Immersion RC uh, Easy UHF. Uh, we're using them for flight, uh, also to change between flight cameras, and also to adjust the uh, the two positions on the gimbal. So because of that, we we could probably take out the horizontal uh, adjustment on the gimbal and use that to run the lights. But um, typically, you're going to have them on or have them off. So I didn't really see a need for that. And uh, sometimes, just for creativity, I might want to adjust the gimbal in flight. So if we go to the rear here and turn the lights on. You'll see these are the rear reds. They almost look like neon tubes because the LEDs are so close together, but there are actually 60 LEDs in there. And uh, these are the six, the uh, uh, six watt uh, each lamps. Uh, these pull about 0.3 amps uh, each bulb. And then the front here, we have the uh, 10 watts, left 10 watts, right. Uh, Cobb LEDs is the same thing. They look like fluorescent tubes, but there's actually 60 LEDs in there. And, uh, we get great, great night vision with, uh, with these lights. Uh, we have no problem shooting video with the GoPro and uh, everything looks nice and bright. So this was my build. Um, there's lots of, uh, some of the other things I might mention is the flight computer inside. There's a, an outline on the bottom of the quad where to set that. Um, I would make sure that you, for the gimbal here, there's an extension bracket, which helps with the uh, stability of the gimbal, make sure that you have this kind of in place and stuff before you actually stick down your NASA flight computer to make sure that it's not going to hit the, uh, the NASA. Uh, make sure you have enough clearance there for wires and things like that. So that's pretty much my build. Everything in here works great. We have no problems with interference. We get uh, great flight times on it. Of course, if we went with uh, 10 by fives, we would get a little bit better flight time, but um, I really like these nine by fives. You get good agility and everything works great. So if you have any questions, if you're building one of these, you're running into problems, feel free to post uh, a question. You can send me an email or if you want to post right on YouTube, that's fine. And I'll try to answer your questions as best I can. Uh, I've already gone through a lot of the pains of setting one of these up. And uh, if, if I could help anybody out, even the slightest with uh, making this a little bit easier, uh, that would be great. So post your comments if you have any, uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.